Up until now, we've been able to use formulas and calculators and be able to figure out so many types of problems. And so one of them that we had was, let's take a rectangle right here. And we know that we could do stuff, I don't know if that was 3.2 and that was 5.8. We had a formula for the perimeter. And this is the formula that we had, 2 length plus 2 width. And we could find this out. You're like, hey, I know how to do that. P equals 2 times the length, which is 5.8 plus 2 times the width, which is 3.2. And you pull out your trusty calculator, and you're like, let's see what that is. 2 times 5.8 plus 2 times 3.2. It equaled 18. You're like, yeah, I know how to do that. If this was in inches and that was in inches, then adding these up would still be in inches, and we get the right units. We're about to embark on an exciting development in our ability to use technology to help us in mathematics. And this is when we find out the power of what a spreadsheet can do. A spreadsheet is like one of the most powerful calculators around. Let's open up our spreadsheet. Here on my computer I have Excel and so we can see we've got little cells here. We're in B2 and normally you can just write stuff in. You click on a cell and write stuff in. Well, there is much, much more to this. Let's go ahead and put a rectangle in here. Then we'll go over here and we'll say equals. That means we're going to do a formula now and it's going to be like a calculator. We had 2 times 5.8 plus 2 times 3.2. Now when we hit enter, it's going to calculate it just like a calculator. Every single cell can be a different calculator, but there is even more that's possible. Let's show you how this works. If we were to write down length here and width here and perimeter here, we can have it calculate a whole bunch of them at a time. For example, we had 5.8 as the length and 3.2 as the width. And here, we're going to hit equals. And I could do it with numbers like I did before, but we've now learned what variables are. And each cell, not only being a calculator in and of itself, can act as a variable. What was our formula for perimeter? 2 times the length. Now, if I click on this cell, C4, it will insert C4 in the formula as a variable, as a length, plus 2 times, click on D4, and it will put that in there. Now when I hit equal, we should get 18. So it worked just like a calculator, but look how powerful this is. What if we change the length to a 7? Now when I hit enter, watch what happens to the perimeter. It changed and is now computed 2 times 7 plus 2 times 3.2, and it gave us a different answer. If I put 15 for the width, it computes it completely. Ah, it's a powerful, powerful experience to watch that happen. And if you wanted to see more than one at a time, you could say, ooh, what if the length were 7.3 and the width were 4? Up here, you can take and either when you drag this like that, it will copy the formula down. Now notice how this had 2C4 plus D4. When we copied it, notice it now has these guys. So it keeps in reference to the cells that you called up in the formula. So let's put a few more in here and copy it down. 5, 6, 12, 15, 39, 40, and 2 and 138. Now if we had all these lengths and all these widths, all we would do is we could drag it down or you can also hit copy like this and then highlight. I'll, all I did was click on a cell and keep my mouse in and pull all the way down and then right click and hit paste. Bing! And look, it did it. It calculated all of them with a perimeter. Fascinating stuff. Let's try that with another formula. Let's delete all of this. I highlight it all, hit delete, and let's do it with uh, Fahrenheit. 
to Celsius. Call it temperature. Okay, so we're going to take our Fahrenheit and we're going to calculate what that is in Celsius. Good. I'm going to slide that open so we, I can read it a little bit. So Fahrenheit, we did one where let's say we had 50 degrees and let's find out what our formula is. Our formula was that Celsius equals, let's go back here and see what our formula was. Our formula from the book for temperature was that Celsius equaled 5 ninths Fahrenheit minus 32. So we just need to put the Fahrenheit's in there. Back to Excel. So it equals 5 divided by 9 times parentheses our Fahrenheit minus 32. Close those parentheses. And look, yeah, it will put whatever number we stick in here, it will calculate its Celsius. So right now, 50 degrees Fahrenheit is 10 degrees Celsius. If we put 38 degrees Fahrenheit, we would get 3.3 degrees Celsius. 96 degrees Fahrenheit will give us that. So we can actually stick in a whole bunch of them. 56, 27, negative 36, 42, 212, and then all we need to do is copy these. So we can grab this little green handle and pull it right down. And it does. That one matches up with that one. That matches up with that, and that matches up with that Fahrenheit and Celsius. Good, let's see one more kind of application. The last application we're going to see with Excel is very powerful. It is to model what happens in a savings account. Okay, so before we were able to do something where we said, okay, let's start with $150 and it gains, say, 6% per year. Okay, so that was, we had a formula that looked something like this. The principal times 1 plus the interest rate to the number of years or the time up here. And so let's say we were out here for 15 years. We could stick that in. The 150 goes in for the P. The 6% goes at 0 .06 in for the R, and the 15 years in for the Y. And we could run that through a calculator, and it would be able to do it. And we could put it in Excel just like we had been doing for the last little while. But if we added a complication and said, oh, we're going to add $25 each year to our account, you'll notice that this formula doesn't have the ability to do that. So we're going to go to Excel and write this in there. Let's see how it looks. So I'm going to call this savings. We'll write here which year we're in, how much we begin with, and how much we end with. So in year one, we're going to begin with $150. And our ending is when we do our formula. We say we are going to equal this amount and we times it by 1.06. So that times it by that first year. We're like, yeah, that's great. And now we add $25. Notice we got to create our very own formula, and it will tell us how much we end with. Let's pull this out a little bit so we can see it. Good. In year two, notice we begin year two with this amount. Now we could type in 184 or we could hit equals whatever we ended with. So no matter what we ended with, it'll show up in this cell. Good. And this one equals, let's see if we get this right, it equals this one with 6%, so times by 1.06 for that year, add $25. There we go. And notice instead of the exponent, like happened in this formula right here, we are now inserting this plus 25 before we do it. And Excel will calculate that every year. So let's highlight all of these right here. And let's drag it down. And let's make sure that, yep, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, year eight. Let's look at it, make sure it's calculating correctly that yeah, so this guy took 
you can see this amount at the end of year four and gave us six percent and then we added twenty five dollars awesome let's keep going let's keep keep it dragging down so we can get that full fifteen years there eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen years and we end up at the end of 15 years with $941.38. Oh, all these decimals are looking a little ugly. I'm going to come up here and it'll say shrink down the number of decimals we have. Yeah, there we go. That looks kind of nice. Maybe we could highlight all of them and do that shrink down the number of decimals. There we go. And we could do the same thing over here. Shrink down the number of decimals and it makes it look just a little bit nicer. Wow, look at that! We were able to compute that even though it was a very complicated problem. One final use of formulas in spreadsheets that you will find very beneficial, especially on your homework, is when it asks you to add things up. So if you are going to take all of these expenses and put down here a total to them, one way to do it would be to say equals, like a calculator, and then you could click on this plus this plus this plus this plus this and so on and so forth until you got all of them and it will add it up the other way to do it is that there are built-in formulas if you go to the formulas here there are functions that will automatically do stuff and in this case there is an a sum that that big E symbol is a sigma and in mathematics it represents summation or to sum things up and you'll notice it did sum of all of those and if I hit enter it did the exact same thing that you can type equals and you can either find it on that tab or just write sum and when you do an open parenthesis it will say what do you want to do and you can just click and drag so click it, hold it down, and drag it through all those numbers, and it will put a colon in between the two, and it'll say all the way from B4 to B9. And then you can close the parentheses like that. So often auto sum will work, and sometimes you can write out sum and tell it to sum up any range of cells that you would like to. That will help you on the homework for this week.